Welcome to our 2022 Clipper 108 ST. So starting right in the back corner here, we just got this little clasp there. You're gonna have them at each corner of the trailer. It's just what's holding down our roof right now. So really, you just got you know a simple little hook there. You pull that down and unlocks. On the other side, you'll have one that'll have a lock through there, so you can lock it up. Also, in each corner of the trailer, you've got your stabilizer jacks here. So you just got that little driver on the end there. You're just gonna grab your uh, jack. I'll show you that in a second here. It'll attach onto the end. You're gonna run that down. It'll contact the ground. Give it another turn or so, and it'll just firm it up. It'll just get rid of any sort of bounce and sway that you see you got in the unit right now. One step down a little again. We just got our little power port there. So you just get a little notch in the bottom corner there. We'll be attaching up through there. We'll grab our uh, short cord in just a second here. I'll show you that. Right here, we just got a fresh water port, so that guy just unscrews, pops off of there, take your water hose, stick it into there, turn on the water, and that'll fill up your fresh water tank. This little part right here is a exhaust for your furnace, so of course, whenever you're running your furnace, you just want to make sure nothing's blocking that off, it does get hot. Right back here is just a service port for your fridge, nothing back there for you to worry about. Right here is your drain for your sink, so you're just going to be unscrewing that, and if you wanted to grab a hose or a bucket or something, it just dumps straight down, right? Tighten that back up. And then right up top here, we've got our city water connection. So you're just gonna take that same water hose, stick it into there, turn on the water, and that'll pressurize the water lines throughout the unit. Down below that, we've got your exterior shower. So you're gonna get a key just like this guy here. It just sticks on into here. Unlock that compartment, open it up, and we get your three foot hose with the standard head, our hot and cold water, and simple as that. Just kind of wrapping it around, tucking it back in, lock it back up. And then up front here, we've got your hot water tank. So you just get that keyway there, just lines up and pops on open. Once you get it open, you can see you got your pressure relief valve up top here. So before you ever turn this guy on, you just want to hit that and fire it up. Or sorry, just let it kind of release out. Uh, if the water tank's full, you'll just get some water coming out of there. It's just letting you know that hot water tank's full and you're safe to fire it up. If you're not getting any water, you just want to make sure it's turned on. Make sure that guy's full before you do fire it up. Your control for turning it on are just inside the unit. So before we Sorry. Once we get in there, I will go over a reset procedure and the button that I'll refer to is just this guy there. Okay. Locking that back up, just flipping her back over, locking that keyway back down again, and there you have it. So around the front here, you've got your storage compartment. So you just set the two clasps there, just open them up. Either end. So these guys do have your locks there, so if you want to grab a master lock or something, just locks into there. Simple as that. Open up the lid, and inside of here. So firstly, these two screws there, if you fold those out, it's access to your hot water tank. So if you're looking to winterize your unit, it's done through there. Right in here, we've got a barbecue, so we'll pull that out. And that'll be going just over on the side here, so we'll just plop that down for a second. Also in here, we've got a power adapter, so that'll be for your shore cord. So you can see it's got a standard 30 amp end there. Most campsites are gonna have that. You can plug straight on in, you're good to go. And if you're looking to plug in at home or if you're at, you know, a smaller campsite, you might need your adapter here. So you can take that, plug it into there, turn it down into a 15 amper. So pull that cord out. We'll go back to our connection here. So as I said earlier, you just get that little notch down in the corner. I'm just going to line that up, press it in, give it a little eighth turn, it'll lock into place. Then you get that threaded collar in the back there to really lock it down, hold it in. And then we'll take our cord and pull her on back. And we have an outlet just back here. So inside of here, you've also just got the little light there, so you can turn that on, right? And then you've also got the little jack there. So inside the unit, we will come across some little fan light assemblies as well as a little light. So they'll have a little jack on them. They're just gonna plug into there and then you can hang them up. As simple as that, you got a little light. Run a bit of fan. This here's the little adapter for all of your stabilizers. So as I said, they are in each corner. So you're just going to attach it on the end and run it down. You're going to want to do this before you try to set the unit up just because it does move back and forth a lot, especially as you're trying to pull out your bed ends.
We also got the water goes here for you. So just the standard ends there, just plug into all the connections that I've shown you so far. Then you also get this jack here. That's gonna be for your winch up front, for your roof. So you're just gonna attach it into there. And then as the sticker says, clockwise is up. I guess we could make sure this stays closed too. As I'm going up, I'm watching this yellow wire here. This little wire is attached to the bottom as well as to the top on the little spring. So once that wire is taut, you're gonna to wanna to stop just so that you know you're at uh, your full height there. That's so right about there. Then right at your bed ends here, you're gonna have that little black strap. You're just gonna kind of reach in and grab it. Pull the bed end on out. It just slides nicely on out. Before we do that all the way though, just real quick. Propane tank down here, just it's so standard. You just got your barbecue style valve there. Just open that up, simple as that. This box here houses your battery. So as long as you're plugged in through that short cord in the back or your seven pin to your tow vehicle, that battery is charging for you, okay? Once you pull it out all the way, you'll hear a couple of clicks and you'll also have these white wires here. They'll just kind of be pulled tight. Those are what are holding your tension and supporting the end of the bed. Right. So once you do that, you can see it just kind of sits in place, locked in. If you wanted to physically check, you're gonna kind of look for these knobs here. Just make sure those are down, we're locked into place, right? Now with it out, once we get inside, we'll be, you know, messing with all of our tent poles and making sure this end comes up nicely. For right now, though, we're going to come underneath. You can see you've got this kind of stitched corner here. Pull that around the edge. And then underneath, you've got Velcro. Just line that all up. Attach it into place. You're doing the same thing on the other side as well. And then you've just got this little string here. You can see that's tied up nicely. We'll just leave it tied up nicely for, for you actually. But that'll be going straight to the other side. And you'll see another fish hook kind of just like that. That'll be attaching to. All right, so there's your little hole there. Be to attach that string into. skirting will pull over the edge just ensures that any sort of water is going to be flowing off and over all right and there we have the one bed then you're just going to go around do up all of your zippers make sure these are tucked in nicely bring this over line up that velcro and there you have the one end and we'll do the same thing at each corner. It's the same thing, you got your black strap, pulling it out. Let's see if we got room here. Close enough, I guess. It's the same thing, you got your corner there, tucking that in. It is the exact same as the front bed end. Actually, one more thing I almost forgot before we continue on with that. Inside of the unit underneath one of your beds. So this is handle just up and over. Grab the door there. It is on a kind of a support. It should be. 
And as we come in underneath one of the bed ends, of course the back one. We've got our supports here. So these are kind of a fail safe. So if for some reason your lift system were to ever give up at any point in time, these guys clip onto your towers here, slide it in, snap it into place, just kind of press it on. Right, so you can see we've got the cutout channel there, that's going to be to the top. Snaps into place and then it's just kind of a fail safe. So if anything would ever happen, it's not slamming down on you. Now typically you want to do them at opposite corners just for the support of the roof. Now I guess just the last things for the outside would be the barbecue as we said earlier. You've also got the GFR protected outlet here. So if that ever doesn't work, I'll show you the reset just inside in a minute. Now we've got your storage compartments at the end. I believe nothing's in here right now. Yeah. So just kind of empty storage. It's right underneath kind of your couch. We'll show you that in a minute here as well. And then right in the back, a solar panel plug-in. So just a two-prong plug-in to there, charges your batteries, and you can run off of that. All right. Now the barbecue, we'll grab the stand, which we need to get into here for. Oh, it's not in there, so maybe it's in the bag. stand here you just got the two silver arms there just gonna swing them out and they lock into place and then you get the channel in the back there top's gonna slide in pops on down and then just kind of supports itself on its rubber bumpers back there and for your barbecue you get a channel on either side just gonna line those up slide them in then you just get your little safety pin there kind of run that into the end of that silver rod and lock it into place. Right. And then the hose just on its quick connect so that block collar pulls back, pull it apart, and then right underneath the handle there, press it in, that black collar locks it on. And then down here, it's the same sort of valve with the addition of the little valve there as well. Right. So you have that on and off. So with that valve off, you can open up that quick connect. With it on, you cannot, so just kind of an added safety feature. Press it in, open up the flow. Open up our barbecue here, and then just turn it up to max. Hit it with the igniter there, and once it clears all the air out of the propane line, you can see she fires right up. And once we're done, just in and over to off, and there you have it. Turn off the flow of gas, push in that quick connect, and you can pull it apart. Tuck it back away. I like to just connect the hose to itself, just ensures that absolutely nothing's getting in there. And lock it all down. Pull that gun off of there. Slide it back off, pack it all up, and throw it back away. Right. Now inside of our unit, once we get in, you can see our stove, is, or our stove and our sink is flipped over. We're just gonna flip that on up. All it in place and then that handle there just has that little button you can push that down slide that post out of the way if you want to once you've got it opened up then you can turn on all of your lights 
obviously not one up front here. Right. And then underneath the bed, we'll have this one again. Oh, right here, actually. We've got our pole, poles. So they are both the same length. We're just gonna attach it into that guy with the red band, push it in, pull up that end, push it on out. Make sure it's good and tight. And then set it into one of those claws there. And there's your bed end set up. You also got these little kind of hangers or shelves or whatever you want to call them. They're going to attach up with the Velcros to these kind of little hooks that you got up in either corner here. And then you can use it as kind of a storage space if you want to. And so for the rear bed end, same as the front, just grabbing your pole and sticking it into that hole there with the red line, taking it, stuffing it up, pushing it in the front, grabbing that little tooth up there. And then the same thing, you get your little shelf there, just attaching into your two little ends. You get a privacy curtain here, so those guys will just kind of clip up. It is fairly common to find them kind of unclipped, so you're just going to take that channel into the channel there, press it in, simple as that. And you can see you just kind of close off your end there. All right. Now I'd mentioned fan lights earlier. They're just down in the storage compartments here. So you can see the one light here. It's just got the jack. Just attaches into the end. Right. It just kind of gives you the additional light there. So if you want to take that, get the two hooks, clip it up just like that. All right. You get the same idea out of your fan light assemblies here. You get the same sort of jack there, just attaches in. Right. And then the same hooks there, hang it up. You get a light as well as the two speed fan, one and two. Right. You get the same things, another set, I guess, for the one up front. Right. Yeah, that one. And then also these mattresses are heated. So you have your little attachment here, right in the end. You can see you've got the little plug in for it right there. Just attaches in like that. You can see it's got the little pigtail, only goes in one way. And then that'll just be plugging in. There's an outlet right down here. So speaking of that outlet, we will set up your dinette here real quick. Just gonna take the backs, sit on back there. For this cushion here, you have that little back support. I'm just gonna flip that up, slide that cushion back, pop that into place. Grab our table here, just kind of slide it on out. And you can see it's got the little Velcro back there. Just gonna undo that, and then we can flip out our legs. Make sure they're locked into place. And then down here you've got your control for your furnace, your little thermostat there. So with that slider all the way over to the left, you can see that's off. All the way over to the right is max heat. Anywhere in the middle is going to be your temperature selection. Your furnace is just right down over here. So the nice thing about this little guy is if you look in the bottom left corner, you'll actually see that little blue flame once it fires up. And then it's just kind of dumping all of its heat out through it right here. There you go, you should be able to see that little flame now. Now the first couple of times you run that guy, you might get a little bit of a smell throughout the unit. It's just a new furnace smell, perfectly normal. Slide that slider all the way over to the left, it'll click, and that's it turned off. Now outside I'd mentioned the GFI outlet, so this is your reset right here. So you get the test on the left, reset on the right. And then your power converter here, so just press the top and center, it'll pop on open. On the left side, you get all of your breakers. Whenever a breaker breaks, it'll sit in the middle, so just turn it off and then back on. And then on the right side, we've got all of your fuses. Underneath this seat right here, if we just pop that up, you can see you got that little hole there, so you can open that up, you get a little bit of a storage compartment down here. On this side, it is screwed shut because in here is kind of your... Uh, um, electrical access as well as your water pump so if you're looking to winterize your unit you'll be pulling this out so one two three screws pops on out and you got access to your hot water sorry to your water pump okay 
at the end of this year. You've got your LP detector. So propane's heavier than air, it'll sit on the floor. This guy will detect it and start going off. To the left of it, we've got your water pump switch. Turn that switch on, turns on your water pump, drying out of your fresh water tank, pressurize all your lines. And then on the right side here, you've got your water heater. So as I'd said outside, you might have to reset it. So I'll just go through that right now. So turn that switch on, that red light will come on, just letting you know that it will fire up. Once that fire up sequence has started, that light's gonna go out and it'll try that three times. If after that third try, that light comes back on and it stays back on, it's just letting you know it hasn't fired up. So at that point, go hit that reset button that we'd shown you and you're good to go. And I'll sat right here, you can hear the whir of the flame. We know it's good. So this couch right here, you can see it's got these two weird legs there. That's because it's got a separate stand on it. So it just kind of slides on out. Okay. And then you take that cushion there, you can turn it into another bed. Kind of additioned with the dinette there, you can create a whole bedding area. And then you're just gonna take the back, slide that back up, slide it back in, and you have a couch. Okay. With the storage underneath it, of course. Now inside of your entrance is also your fire extinguisher. Right beside that you get two switches. So on the left there is your two exterior porch lights, the two blue lights on your ceiling or your roof. The one on the right does your little entry light there. And up on the ceiling is your um, roof vent. So you just got that knob there turned to open. Just make sure that's unlocked too. Turn to open. And you can see she automatically fires right up. Speed selection in the back corner here, so 0, 1, 2, and 3. And if it ever doesn't work, the fuse there is the first thing you should check. So as you saw, it does automatically turn off when closed. And there you go. Alright, so the fun part. Your, <laughs> your door. So you get your two straps here. Do the two in the back first, because then you have those kind of metal wires there holding it up for you. And then we'll do the two by the entry. And it's gonna fall on you. You're gonna pull it forward and just kind of line it up into the bottom channel there. You can see where it falls right into place here. And then up top, you've got this kind of metal uh, little channel groove there. Just gonna make sure that lines up and slides into it. And then make sure that bottom is lined up and slid into its groove. And then we can open up the door and just kind of make sure all of our Velcro is lined up. Make sure that Velcro is tight. That is where it is kind of, you know, sealing the unit off for bugs and whatever. It's not going to be 100% that it is just a tent, but we can do the best we can, right? The same thing on the other side here. You can also open this guy up so you just get that little clasp there. Slides on down. Say hi to Dave. Hey, Mike. <laughs> So with this screen door down and that fan turned on, you can feel a really good rush of air coming through here. It helps kind of evacuate that kind of, you know, warm, steamy air that kind of collects during the summer. Now for your stove here, you just get that little asp there, just kind of holding it tight. Open that up, flip it on open, make your two wings here. Flip those on out and we can grab a lighter, flip that over to high. And again, once it clears the air out of the line, side here and there you have it right. now whenever you are cooking with this guy you got to remember you are putting off those propane fumes you want to make sure that fan is turned on evacuating those fumes for sure right. once we're done turn it off making sure it cools down then you can fold those things back in close it back up and lock it back down hot and cold water beside it so just make sure whenever you are using this that you've got that drain outside opened up a little bit of storage down below it just being mindful of our drains and our water lines right there also mindful of the fact that this guy does flip over when you are closing up the unit so if you've got anything in there you want to unload that before you go leaving down below that you got a power outlet down below that is your charging center it's the 12 volt outlet up top and the two usbs down below 
the fridge. You just got that little last bit. You can open that up. Okay. Then you've also got this kind of, I guess, a locking tab or a locking disc ring, whatever you want to call it. With that over to the left, that's it on vent. So it'll only close part way. And then with it over to the right, just open that up. And then it over to the right, that's where you can actually open and close it completely. So for storage, you want it on vent. Otherwise, you're just gonna be leaving it normal. So up on the left side here, you've got your control. It's the one on the bottom left there. Press and hold that and that'll turn it on. Okay. And then on the right side, the bottom right there, sorry, you've got your temp selection. So the big blue light there is gonna be your coldest. The little one at the top is gonna to be your warmest. You can cycle through that. And if you've just gotten out to your campsite or if it's been a while since you've ran the fridge, if you just press and hold that temp select button, it's gonna come and light up that very bottom one. That's gonna be a quick cooling feature. So it'll just kind of run that, uh, you know, cooling as basically an overdrive and just getting as cool as it can, as fast as it can. And it also helps with the actual freezing of the freezer. The freezer compartment itself is removable. You just pull that straight on out. Right? And if you're not using the freezer, you just wanna make sure you press and hold that super cooling again, or the fast cooling, whatever they call it. Cycle through and just make sure you have your temperature just normally selected. Otherwise you can freeze out the whole thing, right? which will overwork it and you don't wanna be doing that. Close that up. Right here is not a storage compartment. It's kind of just a service port. And then your toilet here, pop up that bit there. And then this guy just folds on around, kind of gets you away from the door. And then you've also got a privacy curtain right here. That'll just slide on out. Closes off the area. And it is cut around the diagram, the um, kind of table there as well. Okay, and then the toilet itself, seat as normal. For flushing, you take out that handle, pull that over, opens up the bottom. And the blue, blue button, that's what's flushing. You fill it up as well. And there you have it. So you can see it's currently pink. We do have the unit currently winterized. All right. And then for refilling it, you've got your end compartment here. So this is gonna be your water compartment. You just unscrew this. Fill that guy up with water. Watch this tube right here. That'll just let you know where your water level is at. And then down below, you get that green handle down in the very bottom. Pull that up. Slide that on out. Pull this end off. Unscrew that. And then you just dump it out as normal. Right? Okay. That right, just slides back in. Oops. Make sure it's closed up right. And then the power outlet up front and access to that front storage compartment. Okay. okay. And lastly, I guess would be your smoke detector. And then just the little fast for holding up your uh, straps once you're done with your door. And that's about it for this little guy. So if you've got any other questions on the unit, please feel free to give us a call 204-237-7272. For the awning, you just got your bag here, you're just gonna unzip that. On your side, don't worry, it's not falling on you. You got these little ties here, undo them. Now it might fall on you, so just hold it and then unwind it, pull it out tight, and then right in the end here, you got your poles. Just gonna pull that one out. This guy would be down at the so If you're out at a campsite, hopefully you've got nicer ground and tile floor. You've got some stakes inside of the unit. They're gonna go through those holes there, stake them down into the ground. And then on the other side here, you've got these poles on the inside. It's a little tough to do inside here. All right, let's pull. And then up top of the unit, up on the side wall. Right. Up on the wall here, that little black kind of prop up there. 
push into that, extend this arm out, and then turn it, and that'll lock it into place. And then the other side, same thing. You know, Mike, it's always better with two people. Let me grab this, buddy. So you can see just a little push button snaps there. Just pop into place. <laughs> then you can get it propped up. And once you have it kind of out in its place, I'm just going to take the arm and I'm just going to kind of turn it and that will lock them in. Just kind of puts the tension on them. Then you get the little Velcro strap, wrap it around there as well. And there you have your eye.